Good morning, everyone, and what a great view to start off the day here. This beautiful desert scenery. Typical southern Utah beauty here. We've got canyons and mountains and mesas and plateaus and all sorts of good stuff. Today we're going for a hike, and that hike starts right here and goes this way. This hike is the only thing that I'm going to be doing today. I think it's about four miles each way, and there are several interesting things we're going to be seeing along the way here. I'm looking forward to this. I camped just a couple miles down the road last night, and so I'm here first thing in the morning. I'm the only car at the trailhead, and the weather is a little bit uh, threatening today. I think there's like a 30 or 40 percent chance of rain, so we might see some raindrops here and there, but I'm not doing any canyon hiking today. There's no flash flood danger or anything like that. And man, this is just, this is beautiful. I love it out here. I've been hiking for 33 minutes now. Fun hiking up and over slick rock and there isn't really an obvious trail. There are occasional cairns or rock piles like this one here, but there are actually quite a few of them. Like you'll get to a spot where it's like, okay, where do I go from here? And there'll be a cairn over here and a cairn over here. And it's like, well, is that really helpful having two different trails to follow? I don't know. But the view from here is awesome. I'm at the edge here of a deep, deep canyon. The drop off is not too far past where I am right now. Beautiful country. You can see a little sliver of the Green River out there. Just incredible. But even more incredible is the first real stop on today's trail, and that's right in front of me here. This is called Colonnade or Five Hole Arch. This is a spectacular place. This is a spectacular arch, or rather series of arches. And both names, Colonnade Arch or Five Hole Arch, both are very appropriate here. If you prefer Colonnade Arch, that makes sense because there are these columns, this row of columns here. And if you prefer Five Hole Arch, we have one hole here, two holes here, the big third hole here, fourth hole right above me here, directly overhead, and then the fifth hole is over on the far side of me here. Right there. This is the arch on the far side, and these are the two colonnade arches on the other far side. The farthest of the two colonnade arches is an almost perfect oval, making for a great Instagram hero shot. And this is the view out of the largest opening of the five. This is the main opening. And again, we have a little peak, the Green River down there. This is the type of place that people need to visit who say the desert is brown and ugly. It's hard to come to a place like this and not just be a little bit awed and inspired by it. I'm a little bit sad to be leaving this place. I've been here for probably 45 minutes, and there are obviously thousands of arches in southern Utah. There are bigger ones, there are more famous ones, there are more prominent ones, but this is unique, and there's something beautiful about the, the natural architecture here that is just compelling and, and singular, and I really enjoyed this spot. But it's time to move on to the next one. Do you see the point of this triangle out here? That's where I'm headed.
Welcome to Bow Knot Bend. This is a spectacular viewpoint above the Green River here. You can't access the Green River from this spot, but that doesn't mean it's not worth coming to. The views alone are just incredible, but there is something interesting about this spot behind me here. So this is the Green River and this is also the Green River. The river makes a huge loop, a huge bend, a seven or eight mile long bend to get back here. And the distance separating them here is less than a quarter mile. Very short distance. And I think eventually in several millennia, they'll probably connect here. But uh, for now, it just makes a huge, huge loop here. And the views are so great. You can see why it's called the Green River. Both here it's green, and then as I mentioned in the previous video, I've been to near its headwaters in Wyoming. It's also green there. Wow. It wasn't an especially difficult hike to get here, but it was pretty long. So going to Colonnade Arch took less than an hour, uh, but I've been hiking total for three hours, 23 minutes, including going to Colonnade Arch. And the total distance to get here was 6.83 miles. Not much elevation gain, only about 250 feet of elevation gain, but uh, a lot of it, like I said, trailless terrain and just totally worth it. Spectacular country here. Haven't seen anyone else all day. Amazing spot. And interestingly, you can see old roads on both sides of the river across the river here. So to my left, you can see that old road going alongside the river. My map on my phone shows that still as as a road. I don't know if it's, if it's still accessible, if it, you can still get down there and drive it. Looks decent enough though. The same map also shows this road. You can see it pretty well right there, but it shows it as more of a trail. So again, I don't know if either of these is still drivable. Let me know if you've driven either of these roads, if they're accessible still. I do know that you can drive to the top of the mesa over here and also to the top over here. Those are both accessed from Moab to the east versus where I am now on the west side of the river uh, that is accessed from Green River or Hanksville, if you're familiar with the area. I can actually hear... Oh, I can see! Okay, this is drivable. I see some uh, some side-by-sides and some dirt bikes down there. If we zoom in here, we should be able to see them. That would be an amazing drive. I have to add that to the list for future adventures. So cool. I'm gonna hang out here a little bit longer, enjoy the view, enjoy a snack, then I'm gonna head back the way I came. And uh, there is one more thing that I wanted to see out here on this hike. I actually passed kind of close to it on the way here, on the way to Colonnade Arch, actually. It's, it's not too far from the trailhead, but I wanted to do the arch and get to this viewpoint here first. So I'll head back that way. I won't film it until I get there and uh, we'll wrap it up after that. Well, it's an hour and a half and about four miles later. I'm almost back at the trailhead, but I wanted to take a detour to see and show you guys this. This is called Crocodile Rock, and it's smaller than what I thought it was after seeing pictures online, but still just a fascinating little rock formation. I have no idea how something like this would have been formed. This is also called Dragon's Teeth, which again is another great name for it. And the tallest of these is maybe eight or nine inches long. I don't really want to touch it. They seem pretty fragile. There are lots of broken ones on the ground, actually. I wonder if these were additional teeth or if these were longer pieces that used to be, you know, on top of the teeth. What a strange, strange thing. And it really does look like a crocodile, doesn't it? And while we're on the subject of interesting geology, there is something up the hill here that I passed by that I want to show you guys. So there are two things here, really. The first being these kind of strange circles in the rock here. They're all over the place. 
Some of them is, it's just kind of an outline and some of them are more solid like this. I'm reminded of Moki marbles, which are these kind of very round stones that you can find on the ground in certain places in southern Utah, but I don't think these are those. But they're all over the place. And then also scattered around out here, both on the slab, then I passed several pieces up on the hillside over there. There are pieces of jasper out here. I th I'm pretty sure this is jasper. This red, neat red rock. I don't think the camera is focusing here. There, that's better. Pretty big piece right here, and then there are some smaller pieces right here. Pretty cool. Again, it's not focusing. Neat. And then just more and more of those strange circles and other shapes. If you're a geologist and you know more about what's going on out here, then let me know or let us know. Leave a comment down below so we can all see it. I actually got an email from someone recently who said, you know, I really like your videos, but I wish you would talk more about the geology of the places you visit. And I just kind of shook my head because I get emails like that fairly often, except it's not just geology, it's history, archaeology, paleontology, zoology, biology, dendrochronology, you know, it's name a branch of, of anything and people want me to talk more about it, whatever their, their pet interest is. And you know, I wish I could talk more about everything under the sun, but I'm just one guy and you get what you get. I hope you enjoy the videos, but you know, I can't know everything. I don't have unlimited time to learn everything and explain every single thing that I see that I encounter on my travels, but that's what the comments are for, right? We did it. That hike was about 11 and a half miles long and it took me about five and a half hours. Fairly long hike, but not too difficult. Like there weren't lots of ups and downs. It was just a long hike, you know, and there wasn't really a trail for most of it, but really, really fun adventure, really worth doing. The arch was incredible, the viewpoint was stunning, and the uh, the crocodile rock was just weird and fun and interesting, and so just a fun adventure all around. And uh, I think I'm done adventuring for the day. I think it's time to go find a campsite. So I'll meet back up with you guys later, and by the way, I'm still the only one at the parking lot. I didn't see anyone else all day, and there's no one else here. This is a fantastic campsite here. It's kind of cradled in the arms of the mountain, nestled back up against the mountain. And I was last in this area about five years ago. And back then I was driving on the dirt road, the main dirt road that's about a mile over this way. And I remember seeing a smaller dirt track leading off toward this area, toward these mountains here, or this mountain here, and, and these gullies and these strange rock formations. And I remember thinking, that looks like an area worth exploring. And it definitely is. Tonight I'm just gonna camp here and then I'm heading to New Mexico tomorrow. Actually, this trip is primarily a New Mexico trip, but I thought I'd stop and make a couple of videos in Southern Utah. But uh, I'll definitely come back here in the future. There's some interesting stuff around here for sure. Memory's a funny thing, isn't it? I can barely remember what I had for dinner last night, but I remembered that dirt road leading off in this direction from five years ago. Maybe that's just a, uh, an indication of what my priorities are in life. But I think this will bring the video to an end here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had a great time as always. And I'm interested in hearing what your favorite part was. And as I'm talking, the sun is coming out. It's the first time I've seen the sun today. Uh, I did get some rain on me, just some sprinkling as I was hiking, nothing too bad. Nothing that I had to stop and wait out, thankfully. But I'm gonna enjoy these last couple hours of daylight here. And again, hope you guys enjoyed the video. 
Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what your favorite part was. And I'll see you in the next one. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site, where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.